Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Tag, you're it. Another adventure of George Valentine. A letter. Yes, sir, she's got one. Right here in her purse. Give ah. me that. Give it back. No, Give no, no, back. no, lady. Wait a minute. Here's your letter. Now, what's the matter? Don't you want me to read it? Oh, you wrote this. That's, That's it. Right. You wrote it and haven't mailed it. You probably mailed it to the postman. He only <laughs> rang once. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Ladies, listen to this. Listen. <laughs> My dear Mr. Valentine. Valentine. Mr. Oh, Mr. would you please? Now, don't I... blush, lady. Don't blush. If our radio audience can only see her. Her, I said, not me. But, madam, if I'm brave enough to wear your scarf over my head, it's really a good fit, don't you think? Don't you think it is? Over the face. Uh, what do you say? It's not a fit, it's a convulsion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're real cute. Listen, how about your husband, madam? Huh? You suppose he's listening? I'll bet he doesn't know about this, Mr. Valentine. Ladies, isn't that a romantic name for you? Valentine. I'll bet your husband's out buying a gun right now. He's got a rival. But you remember our bargain now, lady, on this program. You dared me to wear your scarf so I can read anything I find in your purse. Shall I read it, ladies? Yeah! All right, that's right. All right, ladies, here goes now. Dear Mr. Valentine, I've got to see you about a telephone call. A telephone call, huh? Well, let's make her, uh, let's make her do the call right here from the studio, shall we? All right, ladies, but here's the rest of the letter. Listen. I've got to see you because I'm not sure, but I think somebody is trying to murder me. Murder? Trying to murder? Mr. McMurtry, all I wanted to tell you was that it isn't my letter. It's not my purse. A large woman. She got up and left in a hurry. She must have taken mine. It's her letter. Mrs. Oscar Pettyman, 432 West 16th Street. All right, all right, I'm coming. What do you want? Mrs. Oscar Pettyman, this is 432. Ain't here. Wilson. You her husband friend, Mr. Pettyman? He's in Chicago. Can't stand her. Leaves every chance he can get. Ansel Pettyman's my name, her brother-in-law. I board here. Well, Mr. Pettyman... Yes, the police phoned me, miss, and no, I don't know anything. You hung up on him. Well, why not? Bunch of pests. Anybody tries to kill Bertie, it wouldn't hurt anybody. Why should they care? Well, you're a nice guy. Puzzles, contest prizes. Yeah, you ought to see what she looks like. Well, what do you mean? Bertie's as big as a horse. My dear sister-in-law. So she started to let you let her... Think somebody's trying to kill her. All right. What's all the fuss? Let him. Yeah, there's a time wasting contraption. Now, wait a minute. I'll answer that. I asked somebody to call me here. Valentine speaking. Hal McMurtry. Mr. Valentine. Now, listen. Did you find her? Th there are cops all over the studio. I, I want you to understand, though, that I didn't know who you were when I read that letter. Did you find her? Well, no, not exactly. Not yet. But believe me, we're turning the place upside down. Now, about that game I play on my program. Oh, it, uh, give me that phone. Give it to me. Give well, look, I want to explain to you. Hey, me. what's going on? What's going on? Uh, like uh, hello, uh, uh, this is Holman speaking, F.J. Holman. What? Who? What? Uh, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm the studio manager, Mr. Valentine, and as I told the police, uh, we'll do everything possible. Uh, I have warned McMurtry before about that silly game he plays with those women. They were wearing their scarves and then trying to embarrass them by prying into their purses. Well, they and, love it. You know they love well, that. Be quiet. Program. Be quiet. I, uh... I just wanted you to understand, Mr. Valentine. Well, yeah, sure, Mr. Holman, sure. Nobody's going to sue anybody. Skip it. Uh, but, but, but you can ask Ansel there. He's been our janitor here at the radio station, you know. He's what? 
No, I didn't know anything. Well, that uh, that Bertie Patterman, uh, she's the sort of a person any number of people might want to kill. She's uh, she's a pest, you understand, uh, a pest. Look, uh... a professional radio contestant who's forever snooping around here, and sooner or later she'll be back. Uh, you see, that's what I mean. You don't need to worry. Uh, she's an unpleasant woman, and lots of people. Oh, might... tell it to McMurtry. I'm busy. Hey. Bunch of characters work at that place. Including you, huh? Of course. Twenty years, never never a day sick. How else do you think my sister-in-law get all the broadcast tickets I get them for? Keeps her away out of my brother's hair. Look, I just want facts. Never mind the double talk like that Holman gives out because he's scared his radio station will get involved. Hello from Tag. You're it. You're wealthy. What? Huh? Letter she started said something about a phone call, didn't it? That's right. And when the police ask you Trying about it... I to remember. Only a phone call I know anything about happened yesterday when I was home for lunch. Bertie stepped out to look up something for a newspaper contest. Boy says, hello from Tag, you're it, you're wealthy. What? I'm not fooling. That's the kind of crazy stuff goes on around here. No greedy, no nothing. I remember every word. If you look in your mail today, you'll find you're a winner. We hope you enjoy your award. And that's all? Look in your mail, hope you enjoy your award? It happens all the time. She don't do anything for a living except that. Puzzles, contests, coupons are always ringing up, delivering things. You ought to see her stuff. She's got five vacuum cleaners in this house, and she doesn't use one of them. What was in it, the mail? Uh, what was the award that they... Search got? me, friend. I wasn't here. I work for a living. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, Brooksy, phone Riley. Get him to check the mailman. Sure, George. So, uh... So you don't like your sister-in-law, huh? Nobody seems to. Doesn't do anything. But... I know, I know, yeah. Nut on contests. Well, sometimes I like contests myself. But I suppose it's a little different if that's all she does. Always trying to get something for nothing. Well, that's not the point. The idea is she was worried, wrote to me. It she is not... the point. How worried could Bertie be if she went gallivanting off to a radio studio to have fun before she mailed your letter? Well, I'll grant you that it's... I nice. don't take it seriously because neither did she. Murder. Yes, it's just another idea to waste time with. You ask me, she's out someplace now. Forget all about it. Wait a minute it. now. Tell, tell me, what kind of a voice was that on the phone? That uh, tag, you're it. Man or woman? Man, I guess. I don't know. It lisped. It what? Lisped. Like this. Soft voice. Just barely hear it. Lieutenant Riley? Well, this is Claire Brooks. Oh, wait a minute. Here. Let me have it, Angel. Hello, Riley. Listen, Valentine. We haven't found that Pettyman dame yet. But we just put out a bigger alarm on her because... Riley, uh, look, now, wait a minute. A quick angle. Her husband's out of town, so he yeah, doesn't but I like wanna... her. Yesterday, she got a phone call, and later on, some kind of package yeah, in wait, the mail. Yeah, wait, wait, hey, will you wait? Are you trying to accuse my I brother I already of... got in touch with her husband. He's in Chicago. He's got nothing to do with it. Oh, Riley, everybody seems to think this is just a false alarm. She's just some kind of a crackpot. I want it... All right, maybe so. But if there's one chance in 50 of our preventing a real I murder... Said wait, will you? It's already happened. Huh? I'm busy, I told you, with a blonde. And I don't mean Mrs. Pettyman. The exact opposite. Beautiful, young, real diamond. Riley, for the love My of heaven, My boys will keep on helping you look for Mrs. Pettyman, all right, but don't bother me. This one's a real case, my friend. This blonde, see? And the only clue I've got to go on is a note in her purse which says, Tag, you're it. You're wealthy. Ha! She's wealthy, all right. She's dead. <laughs> How long ago did the doctor say, Lieutenant? Oh, it happened the first thing this morning. The traffic officer found her body in the car, packed up an alley. Girl was shot, huh? Yeah, that's right. Nobody would have noticed it for hours. The best place in the world. Right in the middle of town, an alley in commercial district. But, oh, brother, how you get a connection between Mrs. Pettyman and something like this... Maybe you don't, Riley. This girl certainly lived in a fancy apartment house. That's what I mean. What was she doing in the commercial district? Uh, three eight to the left, I guess. What's she doing with a note in her purse that says the oh, same well, thing as... Huh? Yeah, there we are. It's Dorothy Cheever, huh? Uh, I got the housemaid. She can never stop crying. Oh, Lieutenant, she was such a lovely person. Yeah, such yes. a lovely person. George, yes, I she know, really I know did do all right, didn't she? Yeah. No one hated her. Yeah, you can say that again. No one, I can't understand it. But she I'll was bet so the ball had a guy in that uh, photograph isn't her father. No, no, she was alone, I think, but... So F-J-H. well liked, so lovely. Yes, yes. Well, so you said, well, now, take hold of yourself, see? She's uh, done so well. She's... I'm sorry, lady, I'm sorry, but here. Here, take a look at this. Tag, you're it. You're wealthy. Yeah, that's right. 
We found this note in Miss Cheever's purse. <laughs> now, the handwriting doesn't check with the signature on a driver's well, license. Well, of course not. It's mine. I wrote it. Oh? Well, then you'd better start drying your eyes, lady, and explain what in the name of... I happened. wrote that note for her, so she'd remember, that's all, after the phone call. The phone call? Oh, no, no, not well, the same. Go on, please, go on. Well, I... There was this phone call first thing after breakfast. I was in to clean up. A voice says, Tag, you're it. You're wealthy. What else? Well, an address. I took the message for Miss Chief. An address of what? I'm trying to tell you. It said she should drive a car and park a car in that alley. It's the back entrance of Benson's first store. Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> sure it is, and it's the most expensive place in town. Yeah, sure, go on. The voice says she's picked for a chance at a mink coat. You know, one of them giveaways or something. I guess they take your name from a phone book. Well, of course, she went right away. Wouldn't you, miss? No, a chance at a real mink coat? Huh? Free? Just because you're lucky and your name's been picked for... For... Hey, tell me... What kind of a voice was it? It lisped. It was, hello from Tag, you're it. You're wealthy. Soft, like that. Miss Dorothy Cheever has been selected for a chance at... <laughs> Some oh, crackpot. No. Some absolute nut. Sergeant, get hold of whoever runs that program and the radio station. You haven't heard the worst of it, Riley. Huh? Go ahead, tell him, Brooksy. Tell him what kind of a case he's got. What kind of a connection there is between Mrs. Pettiman and this. Well, we already did call the radio stations, Lieutenant. Mm. And the newspaper contest editors, all of them. There isn't any such thing as tag, you're it, you're wealthy. They've never even heard of it. Oh, brother. Well, that does it. You mean Mrs. Pettiman will turn up dead too, huh? And anybody who's tagged will jump for it. Just like the poor girl here did. Oh, my friends, we're up against a phony giveaway. Somebody just calling people up and giving away death. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Anyone who has cooked French fried potatoes knows that the frying fat can be used again and again. But eventually, this fat becomes contaminated and has to be replaced by fresh, clean fat. Oddly enough, something like that happens to the oil in your car's crankcase. You start out with fresh, clean oil. But after about a thousand miles, the oil is apt to do more harm than good. That's because the oil, which has to protect hundreds of precision-fitted engine parts, is now contaminated by dirt, moisture, and grit. And that leaves you with the choice of two things. You can make the oil last longer, or you can make your car's engine life last longer. You can't do both. To play it safe and economical, have the crankcase drained every thousand miles. Ask for this car saver service at the same stations where you get Chevron Supreme gasoline. At standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. <laughs> Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Yes, tag, you're it, you're wealthy. And the lisping voice on the telephone really means that you've been selected for death. A fictitious giveaway, a contest, and you're the winner. At least that's what happened to Miss Dorothy Cheever. She went to collect on a chance at a mink and was shot. And earlier, a message came from Mrs. Oscar Pettyman promising a prize in the mail. And no sooner had she written her fear to you than she disappeared. Well, if your name is George Valentine, you'll have to agree with Lieutenant Riley as back at the radio station, he puts it so mildly. An absolute madman is calling up everybody, taking anybody's name from the phone book. And we'll never find Mrs. Pettyman. She'll probably walk into something just like the blonde Hello did. Like everybody else. Sure. Hey, wait a minute, listen. Huh? Mr. Russell, you have won. Your name has been selected. Hey. You will just stay in your office wherever you are. So it Your wouldn't happen again. Hey, huh? It's from this way, someplace. Here, come on, in here. All right, whoever you are, put up your hand. Hey, hey, what goes on? Who are you? You were whispering just a second oh, ago. Why don't you ring the bell or not? Uh-oh. The law, huh? Stand still, I said. <laughs> All right, I'll take it easy. I didn't do anything. <laughs> here. 
Hello from Tag. You're it. You're... See? <laughs> Just a gadget. I like gadgets. I hate the work. Oh, I'm Russell, Johnny Russell, night engineer. That was a record, you mean? Where'd you get it? Oh, the telephone. I'm too lazy to answer it. I'm out of the room for a minute. Telephone rings. Goes on the tape. Listen. Hello from Tag. You're it. You're wealthy, Mr. Russell. You have won. Your name has been selected. If you will just stay in your office wherever you are, your prize will come to you. We wish you happiness as a winner in our contest. <laughs> See? Came on my telephone a few minutes ago, I guess. Mr. Valentine, I stepped out for a second. Tape machine rig picked it up. <laughs> so I'm tapped. So it's me. Don't you have any idea who it could be? Look, Detective, I'm a lazy guy. I don't like old women and dogs, but I don't know anybody wants to kill me for it. So uh, just hand me my coat there, friend. I'm on my way. Uh, tell the boss and Nick Murphy... Oh, no, I'm... no, you don't. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ouch! Hey, let go. And there we are. Smiling, the boy dropped dead. You don't think I'm going to stick around here, do you? We'll find out what happens. I'll stay right with you, pal. And wait for my prize to come, huh? I'm not that curious. I'm going to put as many miles between me and this place then as... Then you I... get a bodyguard. Huh? Sergeant! All the same by me. Oh, uh, janitor. Janitor, get the sergeant. Stay here, here. Angel. Well, McMurtry, huh? Holy smoke. It could be me next or you or just anybody. Oh, no, it couldn't. Say, it's quite a place Russell has here, isn't it? All these gadgets, pinups, hot plate for coffee, and this, uh, this picture. George! Uh-huh. The blonde. Yeah, Dorothy Cheever. Russell ran around with her once in a while. Yeah, it all starts to tie together. Not the way I figured, but... Well, she, she used to work here, you know. Oh, no, we didn't. Well, if you could call it that. <laughs> She's not the working type, if you know what I mean. I took her out once or twice myself, but she's too rich for my blood. Well, just what do you mean? Well, don't misunderstand, but, but you know, ambitious. She wouldn't turn down a Duesenberg if you offered it to her out for the best she could get, you know. But that certainly wasn't Johnny here. No, no, she liked men with more money, like uh, F.J.H. What, George? Initials on the picture of the other guy. Ball headed one back at her place, remember? Well, I wanted to see if F.J. Holman is bald. Hey, now, look here, friend. The, the boss is all right. Sure, he dated Dorothy, so what? It's him, sure, but there's no love triangle. Hey, Valentine! George. Yeah, hold it. Come on. <laughs> Busman's Holiday, my friend. In the radio station. What do they listen to? Other radio stations. Hey, don't you understand? We found her, my sister-in-law. Bertie's all right. She ain't even halfway dead. Listen to her. <laughs> well, I don't see anything to laugh at. <laughs> well, I know when I answered the question right, didn't I? Uh, back to the microphone, please. Oh, excuse me. But I'm going to get a prize, ain't I? I mean, oh, my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. Yeah, told you what she's like. Might have known it. Ran out in McMurtry's program this afternoon because she remembered she had tickets to this one. She was just telling them over there... Well, that... we'll have her under protection, too, Valentine. Yeah. Told the audience her cat was sick. They'd laugh. Don't blame them. Piece of candy Bertie got in the mail yesterday. What? Huh? Yeah. What is all this? I'm so confused. Well, apparently Mrs. Pettyman got a box of candy. That's what the package in the mail was yesterday. The award, the lisp sent her. But anyway, she's out of danger now. Like Russell is. Hey, Riley. Hmm? Take a look at Johnny Russell there. What? Uh, huh? I'm all... Uh, I'm all... <laughs> my... My arm. I, I can't move. Get him to the hospital. Come on, lift him. Come on, step on it. Uh, fast as we can, sir. George, his coat. That's huh? what it was. He said, ouch, when he put it on, remember? Let me see that. Yeah, you see that needle there hooked in the lining? You put on your coat, you get a scratch that you don't even notice. Oh, brother, how fast you have to work in this three-ring circus to keep people alive. Mr. Holman's not in his office, Mr. Valentine. Hmm. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, where are you going, Ansel? I work for a living. What do you think? Instruction box says sweep Studio B. Well, janitor's hard pay. All right, all right, all right. George, I don't understand. But... Well, I'll take him one at a time, Brooksy. Mrs. Pettyman got her call first. In some kind of murder attempt through the mail. Candy or whatever it was. Yeah. The whole case got thrown in the open fast because her letter was read right out on the air for everybody to hear. But in the meantime, Dorothy Cheever had got her call and had been killed. Then Johnny Russell. 
You see, Angel, the murderer was working against time, making mistakes, because it was really going too fast for him, too. George, they're tied together, though. I, I mean, the blonde... Well, they've all been the... around here in the studio, sure. The blonde, Johnny Russell, even Mrs. Pettyman, always snooping around trying to get free broadcast tickets, remember? And who's going to be next? I mean, what's the pattern? A killer like that doesn't stop. Shh, it just... Hold it. What's the matter, Ansel? I just happened to think Studio B isn't being used tonight. It's a spare down in the basement with the reserve switchboard. What? Uh, yeah. uh, supposed to sweep it out for a broadcast, you said. The note told me to do it. It was in the instruction box. Just a type note. Oh, only now it's not there. Ansel, you're the janitor. You see everything that goes on around here. Logically, you'd be the next person that... Hey, Brooksy, uh, get Riley back here. I'm going to be the next person. What? Yeah, stay up here, Ansel. I'll take a look at Studio B for you. Record storage, music library, phone booths. Ah, here we are. Oh, it's a pretty good-sized studio. What? All right, come on now, turn them on. Turn the lights on. Come on now. There's a master board around here someplace. And... What's the matter? Can't you see? Look, it's too late to play games, friend. Put your lip back in shape. Where am I? Yes. Where am I? You can't tell in the dark, can you? Where am I? Oh, now, look for the love. Music stand set up for an orchestra. Did you hurt yourself? Not half as much as you're going to be, friend. Have a music stand yourself. You only struck the piano. All right, now, look, look. You're wasting your time, Buster. I know who you are. Is that so? And I know who you are, too. You're not that stupid janitor, Ansel, are you? You're Mr. Valentine. Oh, great. Oh, what a smart boy. Smart as any... Oh. That was a sound effect for Mr. Valentine. Thunder, bells, anything you want. But no one upstairs will hear it. You know, it, it's a radio studio. It's soundproof. Yeah. Yeah, a radio studio. Uh-huh. Great place to work in. What happened? Did you get fired or something? They pick on you? Come on, come on, tell me. I know where you are. You haven't moved, so you're still somewhere by the big control switchboard. Mr. Valentine... Look, now, I won't hurt you. Yeah, I'm on your side. In fact, I'm almost on you. Hey, let go of that guy. Get away from those switches. Hey, look at the wrong switch, Mr. Valentine. No, no, what a mad hush. No, no, you don't, Buster. Get over there. I'll get the lights. Get over there. And I still have the gun. Well, well, well. Hello, Ansel. You couldn't shoot me in the dark, could you? You guessed who I was. It wasn't a guess, Buster. You made a mistake. But skip that part of it. I'm on your side. Forget it. <laughs> of course you're on my side. But I was fired. You guessed that. Fired? <laughs> After 20 years of service? Pullman said I should rest. But I work for a living. I, I'm not like the others. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The girl who was out for everything she could get without working for it. Johnny Russell. He's that type, too. And Bertie. Always looking for a free prize someplace. Stop looking past my shoulder. I'm not going to turn around. <laughs> the work is wounded. And I work. And I get fucked. Are you going to kill Holman, too, the boss? Lots of people I'm going to kill. Parasites who toil not. Sure. Yeah. Or upstairs, you pulled that gag to get me down here. It was going too fast for you, wasn't it? Holman was out, and you had to have time for him. You understand, don't you? You're in the way. Now, look, Ansel, you know this is all in your imagination. Uh -huh. Those people you tried to kill are all right. Holman's all right. I know too much, but I'm not so bad either. Shut up! Why don't you lisp like you did in the phone calls? That was your mistake, you know. I don't make mistakes. You're the first one who told me about the lisp. And you pretended you'd taken the first call from that voice. You said you remembered every word. Hello from Tag. You're rich. You're wealthy. If you look in the mail today, you'll find you're a winner. We hope you enjoy your award. Friend, in that entire message, there's not a single S for anybody to lisp on. For the last time, look at me. Now, and look at the gun. You can't fool me. There's no one behind me. I locked that door when I followed you in here. 
<laughs> what difference does it make what I say? I work. I've worked all my life. Every penny I've made, I've made because I've sure, worked. Oh, sure, that's right, friend. This is a radio. I'm going to kill you, and no one will ever no, know no, that no, it was no, I. No, no one's ever going to know what. Yeah. Let me tell you just one thing, mister. It's just what I've been staring at. One of those switches we hit. Maybe lots of people will know about you, friend. Mr. Valentine. Now you listen to me. Now, I don't know what it means. You could tell me. But right behind you, back there over the door, there's a big red sign that's all lit up. Yeah, look at it. In great big red letters, it says, On the air. What? No, no, this studio That's is... all set <laughs> Ansel was always strange. Mr. Holman told you that. He'd saved enough money. He didn't need the job. I wouldn't try to explain him. Of course, I never paid much attention to him. We know you were busy all the time doing... Well, doing... Well, doing what Ansel didn't like. I beg your pardon. There's nothing wrong with contests, is there? With a bit of skill and a bit of luck? Oh, no, no. We just... You can't tell me there's anything to any of those ideas he had. A madman like that. A man who'd kill people. Oh, no, try no, to... no, no. Oh, no. I, I like puzzles myself. You're, you're perfectly right. Now, there's no excuse for him. He's locked up where he should have been long ago. Oh. Well, I just wondered, that's all. Because, you see, I just heard about another contest. Uh -oh. They're going to give away the most beautiful prizes. And it ain't really getting something for nothing either. Because it's a mystery quiz. And I thought if you'd give me some help, Mr. Valentine, That's I all, might even... this is where we came in. Good night, Bertie. We're going to a movie. Yes, George, to the Tivoli. Hmm. Why the Tivoli? We're giving away a set of dishes. Oh. The last place in the world for gum is in the gasoline you use in your car. That's because gummy gasoline raises cane with the fuel line, the carburetor, and spark plugs, cuts down your car's power, and makes it logy when it should be peppy. The fact is, most raw gasolines contain impurities that form gum. The only way to get rid of those impurities is to refine them out. That's why Chevron Supreme is so good to your car. It's the gasoline that's super refined to prevent power-robbing gum. And it gives all the qualities in careful balance that your car needs for every driving condition throughout the West. This proper balancing means faster starting, faster pickup, smoother power on hills. So for supreme performance and plus mileage, depend on super refined, balanced Chevron Supreme. Ask for it where they keep a watchful check on your engine oil at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Wally Mayer is Lieutenant Riley, and Jack Bailey appeared as Hal McMurtry. Pat McGinn was heard as Ansel, Bill Boucher as Holman, Martha Wentworth as Mrs. Pettyman, and Anthony Barrett as Russell. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>